the liberal media is, is very, very quickly to point out that rural Oklahomans are um, sort of Christian-based, kind of right-wing nuts in a sense, you know, gun-toting, um, anti-government, like, get-off-my-land type of thing. They do vote Republican, mostly rural areas do, but at the same time, um, there are issues at hand that the Democrats would be more apt to handle uh, for rural America. I've heard stories of people going to, to Boston, Massachusetts, and, and saying they're from Oklahoma, and people think that we ride horses all the time. <laughs> you know, I, I know people who do ride horses, but it's not how we get to work. Maybe the media can do a little bit more to counter the stereotype, but if they are providing a balanced image, I think that people are just, just, uh, just really look at what they want to see. What constitutes rural America? Because you're from Tahlequah with NSU there, and that's a pretty good sized city. And I'm from Seminole, which has 8,000 roughly, and Dewey has 2,000, you know, and I consider myself rural. But, you know, at the same time, we have a movie theater, and we're able, we don't have to go out of town to hang out. And every person is going to have a different opinion on what rural means to them. If I had to define the difference between rural and, and metro, I have to say, you know, two of everything in your metro. We have one movie theater, uh, we have one of each kind of bar, and we, we have uh, one McDonald's, we have, we have one of everything. I consider myself rural because I can drive five minutes and be at my farm, whereas Kyle might not necessarily see that as rural. There's a lot of different shades of rural around Oklahoma. Though. Some parts of the, of the town are, are really advanced and we have a lot of new growth going on there, but you can still take five minutes and drive to the lake. Or, or drive to the river and, and just get lost on the dirt roads. We have a lot of pride for Oklahoma based or Oklahoma born people and I think we, we pay more attention to that. A big difference is the fact that we have to drive a long ways to get to groceries, clothes, um, gas stations even so there's a lot of travel involved so gas prices is a very important to rural Oklahomans. Gasoline prices and, and energy is a huge huge thing to, to rural Americans, especially when you have to buy gas for, you know, the tractor for the farm and then also the truck and just to drive into town to get groceries. I think energy would probably be the forefront of everyone's mind, especially with high gas prices right now. I think people in rural America, especially where I come from, uh, are a little bit more in tune with what's going on in their environment. I used to live uh, real near the Illinois River and uh, if the river's high, everybody knew about it. If the river is too dirty, everybody would know about it. There's not really the connection to what's going on in the environment uh, in, in a sprawling city than, than there is in, in some place like Cherokee County. Um, I think Oklahoma has the potential to be the cornerstone of America's energy reserves. We have oil, we have natural gas, uh, but we also got a lot of wind blowing out in western Oklahoma. We have that potential, and, and, and right now we're really just not using it to the, to the best of our ability. Until that technology is up to speed, until we build the, the solar panels and the, the wind generators, we're going to need to start drilling on our side. We can't, we can't depend on foreign oil um, forever. I think it's very important that we start drilling again in our, in our reserves, especially in Oklahoma, rural Oklahoma especially. I think it would be it'd benefit rural Oklahoma. They could pay rural families yearly to put these on their property, and that would definitely benefit the, uh, the income that the city or the little rural area receives. But as far as keeping rural America rural, I, I just, I kind of think it's inevitable. It's going to grow eventually. And it's just, the, it's, it's not that we're going to grow, it's how we're going to grow. It's really just how these small towns develop into themselves. One of the unique uh, uh, charms about a small city is that it's small. And, and I know the people who are always elected and who are always in charge of it. Uh, and, and the active participants in the community want to, to keep it that way. You know, America was built on immigration, and that's, that's great. But there's, there's a, a correct way to do it, and there's an incorrect way to do it. Um, you know, jumping the border and coming across unregistered, um, not paying taxes yet, going to school, and getting health care benefits from the state and the nation um, is draining our economy. I think immigration reform is, is very important for the, the security of our nation. I think it's very important that we protect our borders. So while I think it's important that we maintain immigration and make sure only legal and documented aliens come in, 
I think it's a mischaracterization uh, to to imagine that uh, this is some huge drain on our economy. I think somewhere between what these two guys said, I think that's that's the reality in my opinion. It really bothers me that you know Spanish is becoming um, almost a, a major language in the United States. Um, you've got children who go to public schools who don't speak English, and they expect for teachers to be bilingual. Um, I just don't think that's correct. It's, it's policy in the face of reality is, is, is the, what you're talking about. It's not succumbing to it. It's not, uh, accept, it, it's not uh, encouraging it, but it's merely accepting that it's here. There's nothing wrong with learning a second language. But at the same time, like, do we want to risk our culture because of um, immigration that far outpaces our our reproduction rate. As you said earlier, it's almost inevitable that rural America stays rural. It's going to eventually grow. And I think this is the same thing. I mean, culture is always changing. I think people will keep their cultures, you know, it's, it, it's Hispanic culture is not going to hurt the culture of Oklahoma any. If culture is an argument, I don't I think it's wrong. I, I don't see that as being an argument. My background is, is Mexican. My um, My dad's um, mother, is, uh, Cecilia Vargas, her family came from Mexico and then had children here in Dewey. And um, look at me, I mean, <laughs> I didn't ex that didn't exactly create a culture change. Um, that's, that's my point is, and this has happened from the beginning. The first generation usually speaks their native country, their native tongue. But after that, it always changes to English. It, I mean, for the most part, I, I don't speak Spanish. And uh, none of the children that were the crea you know, that came after them being here, speak Spanish. We all speak English. I mean, here I am. I mean, I, we didn't. Ch that didn't create a change in culture. I'm I'm not afraid of culture change because when you talk about preserving your culture, you're talking about a single point on a line that stretches for, for hundreds of thousands of years. If we, if we talk about North American culture, um, are, are we going to talk about the Native American Native American people? who fought to protect their culture? Um, are, are we going to talk about the, uh, the Quakers and Puritans who came over here to protect their culture? Or are you going to talk about uh, the people in the secession of the South who fought to preserve their culture? Uh, culture is, is ever involving in America because you have so much diversity. And, and since we're accepting immigrants from, from other countries, from other cultures, we ask them to assimilate, but we can also learn something from them. And, and it, like I said, it's, it's ever ever evolving. And to, and to say that we need to preserve this point in time, this particular culture, is is not very uh, forward thinking. You're you're correct. Culture does evolve, and it, I mean it's going to evolve whether I, I mean whether we want to or not. Um, and there's nothing wrong with immigration. Are we doing it in a way that we as America can benefit from it, or are we just being used? There is a way that they drain the economy if they're not if they're not doing it correctly. We want to we want to be able to protect ourselves if someone does come onto our land or tries to steal from us. That those are two issues that are important to rural Oklahomans, I believe. Democrats and Republicans both share that view. I think in this state, we're a very democratic local state, but when it comes to national politics, a lot of Oklahomans, like you said, want small government. For the most part, we're pretty middle of the road in this state. There's no room for people in Oklahoma to be too far left or too far right. I mean, we, we have issues that that uh, require solutions that, that have no pl uh, partisan base. I mean, my dad's going to vote, but he, he, he said, you know, it's it doesn't matter which one of these two men are elected, but to me, because I'm still going to do, I'm still going to drive a truck for a living, I'm still going to make this much money, and the, our community is going to look exactly like it does four to eight years from now. Because it's, it's stayed like that, you know. And r rural Americans are often left out of the discussion. And I don't think it's, it's not fair, but that's kind of the way it is. It almost seems as if the, the big parties don't care about us. But if you look, it's rural America that's, you know, electing our president. Oh, yes. um, you know, you can't win the presidency without winning the South.